I want to welcome you from all over the world to our evening session of Word Festival uh, Conference 2021. I bring you greetings from Namibia and we are so happy to be part of this conference. We do look forward to these gatherings every year because it's a place where we get energized and rejuvenated. I want to honor our senior pastors and I want to honor our president and mom president and thank them for the opportunity to be a blessing to the body today. Uh, all ministers of the word of God that have been ministering, what a joy to be experiencing such a time in the presence of the Lord and all the presentations that have taken place so far. We are so blessed to see how God is doing so many things in various CFA assemblies around the world. And uh, as the psalmist says in Psalm chapter 96, that I will sing a new song. We believe after this conference, we are going to go out and sing a new song unto the Lord because we are going to declare of his mighty wonders and we are going to proclaim his works among the nations of the world. Hallelujah. So allow me to get into the word of God. Let us read the word of God uh, from our theme text, which is Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 to 19. The Bible reads, Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stores, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. I'll also read a supporting scripture from the book of Acts chapter 5 verse 38 to 42, which reads, Acts 5, 38 to 42. Therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone. Let them go. For if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. His speech persuaded them. They called the apostles in and had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. The apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Let us pray. We honor you, Father. We glorify your holy name today. Thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence and hear from your word. We open our hearts to the ministry of the word. We open our hearts to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for the spirit of understanding that helps us to understand the word of God. We give you back the honor and the glory because you deserve it, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. We love the word of God because the word of God is a way of motivating us. It has got a way of encouraging us even though we may be in times of discouraging moments. In the book of Habakkuk, which we have read this day, which is our theme text for this conference, it is uh, a book that is written by a poet and a prophet. Habakkuk was a poet and he was a prophet as well. And he is ministering at the time when Jehoiakim was king of Judah. And this is a time when people were looking for help in wrong places. We hear of looking, them looking for help from Egypt. We hear of them looking for help from Assyria, forgetting that their help was in the name of the Lord. Uh, he lived in times of increased fear because their enemies, the Chaldeans, they were busy on the rise and they were threatening the children of God. And our theme text that we have read this day is a commitment of faith to a depressed people. So the prophet comes on the scene and he gives a declaration. He says, under normal circumstances, the fig trees are supposed to bud. He says, under normal circumstances, the vines should produce grapes. All things be equal. He says, the olive crop should thrive. There should be food in the field. And the sheep must be in the pen. And the cows or the cattle must be in the stores. But... 
Peradventure, the, the fig trees are not buddy. Habakkuk says. Peradventure, the sheep are not found in the pen as they should be. Peradventure, the cattle are not in the stores. Peradventure, there is no food when we believe there is food. He says something remarkable. The prophet says, yet will I rejoice. Hallelujah. Yet will I rejoice, not in himself, not in the circumstances that is prevailing. He says, I will rejoice in God, my Savior. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. I believe as we are at this conference, many of us wish life could be a bed of roses, but it is not. Many of us wish there could not be changes, but life is not like that. Somebody said, change is the only constant in life. It comes to humans whether we give it permission or not. It comes whether we give it allowance or not. Change happens to all of us. I think of a month ago when we were going to Zambia. We were passing through Oara Tambo International Airport. That place used to be so engaged. You could see people flocking in 24-7. You could see people coming in and out at all times. But as we were passing through that place four weeks ago, the place looks deserted. The place which was once lit and many activities going on. You can only see some few aeroplanes parked over there and they happen to be so small. They happen to be the airlines, the smallest version of aeroplanes. The big aeroplanes are not to be seen anyway. Travels have changed. Our times have changed. No more are we able to visit one another as we used to be. That's why we are having a virtual conference instead of a physical conference. Change is happening. From the least one of us to the greatest, everybody can see that definitely our world is changing. And what should we do in a time when our world is changing? I believe the theme of our conference, it is the it is a relevant thing to say the least because we are in need of joy again. We are in need to see the world happy again. We are in need of seeing people coming into a place of rejoicing once again. And that is the theme of our conference. And we are going to trust the Lord to continue to speak into us. And that is the theme of my message as well. I will rejoice. Yet will I rejoice again. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. In the book of Acts that we have read today, it talks about an interesting passage of scripture. In fact, Acts is a very interesting book. It is the one that bridges the gap between the Gospels and the Epistles. As a ministry, we do identify a lot with the book of Acts because the book of Acts places so much value on prayer as we place value on prayer. As a ministry, we place value on the word of God as this book places value on the word of God. Over and over again, you hear the, the scripture talking about prayer and the preaching of God's word. Intensive evangelism is preceded by an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. And we hear from this passage of scripture in Acts chapter 5 that the disciples were making tremendous progress. Men and women were coming to the Lord. The world was ticking for them. Things were happening. They were experiencing a great revival. There was such an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Healings were the order of the day. Talk of prayer. These people were praying all throughout the time. They even had an hour of prayer. Talk of healings. People would be healed even using handkerchiefs. They were at the height of, a, of, of, of revival. They were seeing the tangible presence of God. But I want to tell you that though they saw the tangible presence of God, this book is also showing us that there are moments when they were discouraged, just like we are discouraged in one way or another because of what is happening. It is a book of great courage, the book of Acts, but we also see discouragements. I love to read the word of God because I can identify with the word of God. I love to read the word of God because I've got high moments. I've got moments when I sense like I'm so close to God, although you're not supposed to live like with the feeling, but there are moments when you feel that the ministry is going so well, but there are moments when you feel challenged one way or another. Such was the time of the book of Acts, chapter 5, that we've read. Busy, they are ministering the word of God. And the Bible says that Sanhedrin, the chief rulers, came and flogged them. They were beaten. They were embarrassed. They were put to shame. 
I believe this is an important part of scripture because we live in a world that is questioning what is happening. In fact, some people are now going by the just world hypothesis. The just world hypothesis says the world is just. You only get in life what you deserve. But if you look into this passage of scripture, it is contrary to that theory because these are people that were doing a good act. And in the midst of doing a good act, they find their they are not rewarded as ones that are doing a good act. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. If you believe in the just world hypothesis, how are you going to account for the story of Joseph in the book of Genesis? A righteous child of Jacob, a straightforward child of Jacob, who used to bring a bad report about his brother. He was trying to put the family together. And as he was trying to put the family together, he finds himself in trouble. He finds himself in, in a pit. Not only does he find himself in a pit, he finds himself in a dungeon, a prison, for not doing anything. We are here to let each other know that there is no need of us to accuse one another. There is a need for us to know that good, good people, bad things happen to good people. If you don't believe it, how are you going to account for the story of Daniel, a man that was put in a lion's den for praying? How are you going to account for these apostles that were busy preaching and helping the community to be a better place and they are found beaten? Beloveds, bad things can happen to good people, but that does not make the Lord unjust. We live in a world that is unfair, but God is faithful. We live in a world that is unjust, but the Lord that we serve is a just God. May the name of the Lord our God be glorified. I think of our story that happened in 2005. We were busy going to uh, a conference in Bulawayo. And we were so excited about that conference. In fact, my husband, it was the first time for him to preach at a big conference. And we were happy going to the conference. And as we were there, we were even helping another brother, another uh, pastor, to find his way back to South Africa. So we went out. It was during the night in Blawai. And as we were going out, we didn't know that some armed robbers were following us. They drove us out at gunpoint. We were left without a passport, without a single pen, without a marriage certificate. I don't even know why we were traveling with a marriage certificate anyway. We were left with nothing. We went out of the car, devastated. We went out of the car feeling defeated. We went out of the car with some questions in our minds. And prior to our going mass, but they said we were going to come back after the conference and start the work of God in Opua. And here we are, we went with a new double cab Isuzu. And as we were coming back, we came with a chicken bus full of chickens. And you are saying you are servants of God that are going to start God's work. The world is unjust, but God is just. You may be going through an unfair situation, but God is faithful. We are here to remind each other that the Bible says, the righteous may go through many troubles, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. The Lord is going to deliver us. The Lord is going to minister to us. The Lord is going to help us. My husband says we have to be thankful. If, even though we have lost our car, but we have not lost our life, we we'll wake again and find a car. Today, by the grace of God, we have got so many cars and many other things. He says we are going to experience great things in ministry and we, have, we, are in the, we are already experiencing great things in ministry by the grace of God. I need us to understand that God is faithful. Even though there may be no sheep in the pens, even though there may be no cattle in the stores, yet will I rejoice in the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. For a moment I want us to look it closely. In this word, somebody said, it doesn't matter what happens to us. What matters is how do you respond to what happens? 
When we lost the cry, a brother told us and says, you said you are people of God. When you go back to a poor, people are going to look in your faces and see your response. Go and respond like children of God. That person spoke to our hearts. When we went back, we were telling people, greater is he that is in us than the one that is in the world. They stole our car, but they didn't steal our, our, our lives. To the glory of God, we are alive and continuing serving the Lord. How did the apostles respond? The Bible says in verse 41 of chapter 5 of Acts, as for the apostles, they left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. What a response in time of pressure. I think the word rejoicing there, it's telling us something. It's telling us as a people that the world is a way of rejoicing. And God's people have a way of rejoicing. Rejoicing according to God's definition may be a little slightly different from the rejoicing of the world. Because if joy was a feeling, these people were supposed to be despondent and pity patting and asking many questions. If joy was a feeling, they were supposed to just tell us of how terrible they felt and how unfair life was and how things were not fair. But the Bible does not say the disciples went away pity party. Somebody says, don't tell people all your problems. 80% don't care. 20% are glad it's you. They did not go around and say, hey, you didn't hear what happened. We were only trying to preach the gospel. But look at, at us. They've beaten us. They've just did some bad things to us. The Bible says they went away rejoicing. I believe joy is a fruit of the Spirit. As the word of God says in Galatians, that the fruit of the spirit is joy, love, peace, and many others. Joy is a fruit of the spirit. We need to remind each other that we have got joy as a fruit of the spirit. I believe joy is something that is deeper than what we see. I believe joy is not surface deep. It is heart deep. It's high time even as a people. We understand that our joy is not dependent on what is happening. Yes, we wish things could be better, but even as they are getting better, we will still maintain our joy in the Lord. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Joy is a result of one's encounter with Jesus Christ. The Bible talks of John the Baptist while he was in the womb of his mother Elizabeth. Scripture says when they met Elizabeth and Mary, Mary having visited Elizabeth, the Bible says, Mary, uh, Elizabeth says, why is it that at the sound of your voice my baby leapt with joy? It is a result of an encounter with God. Joy is a result of an encounter with God. Because when you encounter Jesus Christ, you have encountered with everything. The Bible says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. When you encounter Jesus Christ, you have encountered with direction of your life. When you encounter Jesus Christ, you have encountered with the truth of your life. When you encounter Jesus Christ, you have encountered with the life, which is true life. The Bible says, he says, why is my baby so joyful? It's because the baby had encountered with his purpose. Beloved, there is nothing that can substitute purpose. Yes, we are going through what we are going through as a people, but make sure that you put the purposes of God always in front of you. The Bible says, I've set the Lord before me because he said, my right hand, I shall not be moved. When you are a man or a woman that is sticking to the purposes of God, even in the midst of challenging situations, you are going to maintain the joy of the Lord. That is why Joseph could not be gloomy. Bible says he actually would look at those who are gloomy and say, why are you gloomy? Why are you sad? I believe he was happy because you can't ask why you are sad if you yourself you are sad. Joseph maintained the joy of the Lord because he knew that God at one point, he showed me the sun, he showed me the moon, he showed me the 11 stars bowing before him and the Lord that I serve is faithful before the sun and moon and the 11 stars bow. If, if they haven't bowed yet, God is not over with me yet. I'm yet to let somebody know that God is not over with us yet. That which he has spoken about your life, it will come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, joy was in the midst of them. The baby leapt. Can I ask you a question? Are you associating with people that make your baby leap? Or some of us, we are associating with people that make our baby to sleep. 
it's possible to associate with somebody and your baby. Instead of sleeping, the baby will sleep. I'm talking of the baby of purpose that God has put in each, one, in each and every one of us. There's a reason why God has created us. And it's high time you find out if you haven't found out about your purpose yet. Your baby should sleep. When you meet with people of purpose like we are doing on this conference, our babies are limping. But when you meet with people that are against the purposes of God, instead of limping, they will sleep. Joseph understood that because the Bible says when she met Potiphar's wife, Potiphar's wife says, sleep with me. And Joseph said, how can I do that thing and sin against God? He was a man that was conscious that I'm carrying purpose. I'm carrying something bigger than what I can see. And I'm going to guard it jealously. The purposes of God for my life. We are in need of boys and girls that know that they are carrying purpose. We are in need of men and women that know that they are carrying purpose. It doesn't matter how far you have walked with the Lord. Check your company. Somebody says it's high time we only walk with all QP, only quality people. I know it very well. Because sometimes some people can come along your way who want to destroy the purpose of God in your life. I remember at one time, here in Oshvarongo, some time back I had a friend, and that friend didn't even have anything to do with ministry. She was a Christian, but she didn't want things to do with the ministry. She says, whoa, Bongai. Every time you're talking about Bible study, Wednesday, prayer, Friday, Saturday, evangelism, Sunday, church. Why are you, do you have a life? She would tell me that. The next time I see her, did you do, did you do anything other than prayer and Bible study? You know what I said? I realized that my baby was starting to suffocate inside. I had to say to her, bye-bye. I cannot continue living with someone and talking to somebody that is disturbing the purposes of God in my life. I'm here to tell you that if you want your baby to live forever, hang around with people that have got purpose. Hang around with people that are going to challenge you to become a better person. Hang around with books that are going to challenge you to be a better person. Hang around with people that are going to, to increase the consciousness of purpose in your life. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. How did they respond? Number one, they responded by rejoicing. We said already joy is a fruit of the spirit. Joy is a result of an encounter with Jesus Christ. Joy is when you fulfill your purpose in God. Joy comes when you are a man or a woman who is serious about what God says about you. That is why David would say, you have filled my heart with joy more than when there are vats overflow with new wine. He is saying, I'm not careful whether my vats are flowing with new wine or not, but the joy that I've got from God, it is more than when there are vats overflow with new wine. Yes, we want money. Yes, we want this and that, but that's not going to, uh, to be the thing that is going to help us to define the joy of the Lord in our lives. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. I need us to understand that the joy of the Lord is our strength. The Bible says they rejoice because they said we have been made partakers of the suffering of Christ. We have been counted worthy to partake of the suffering of Christ. What a response. <laughs> These were a people that were conscious that the suffering of Christ was part of what they were supposed to go through as a people. Hallelujah. The Bible says you are made partakers of Christ. If you hold fast the beginning of your confidence, stand fast unto the end. Scripture lets us know that these people, they were holding steadfast unto the end. And that's what brought so much joy in their life. That's what brought so much joy. That's why they were able to rejoice. Not only were they able to rejoice, but they started to realize that they may have lost one or two things, but they still had got Christ inside of them. They may have lost one or two things, but they were still made 
worthy to be partakers of the suffering of Christ. Sometimes the enemy, all oh, what he wants to point to you is the things that you have lost. But when he points to you the things that you have lost, be like David in the book of Psalm 103, whom when he says, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all oh, that is within me, bless his holy name. He says, bless the Lord and forget none of his benefits. David goes ahead and starts to count the blessings one by one. We are in need of people that are going to count the blessing of the Lord one by one. I may have lost a dear one, but I still have got this and this one. I may have lost my job, but I'm trusting God for another one. I may have lost one or two things, but there's still something that you can be thankful for. Because the Bible says the disciples prior to Acts chapter 5, the disciples says after they were beaten at another incident, they came and said, Sovereign God. Hallelujah. Sovereign God. You are still the maker of heaven. You are still the maker of earth. You are still the maker of the sea and everything that is inside of it. What when they say? They were trying to convince themselves. They were trying to let themselves realize that the temporary things that they were going through were not compared to the sovereignty of God. It's a time for us to maintain our joy. We need to be people that maintain the sovereignty of God. God is still in control. God is still in charge. God is still loving. God is still caring. God is still forgiving. God is still in the business of blessing his children. But when times are rough, he wants you to look at what you have lost. I remember 2013, I lost my dad. He was coming to see us in Namibia. And I was looking forward to that visit a lot. I was looking forward to cooking for him. He had never visited me after I got married. I wanted to cook for him in my kitchen and show him around and many other things. But when he got to Harare, he got sick. And we tried all we could, but he passed on in 2013 before coming to see me. I was devastated. I was so discouraged. And I remember praying in my agony and saying, God, help me to know that you are still in charge. Help me to know that even though this has happened, but you still love me and you still have got plans. For your way says, I know the plans that are for you to prosper, you know, to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. Was, that, was it easy? No, it was very tough. Was it easy? No, it was one of the roughest moments of our life. But I thank God that through the strength, even of my husband and many other brethren, I got to understand that God is still on the throne. And I remember as we were at, our, my, at, our, at the funeral, and I saw my mom walking in my heart. I said, I believe it was the Spirit of God who said to me, you still have got a mother. Thank God for your mother. And I started to thank God. Beloved, there is something that happens when you give thanks to God in the midst of your situation. Anybody can thank God when things are going well, when your children are behaving normally. Anybody can give thanks to God when the bills are paid. But there is something God glorifying when you thank God in the midst of your circumstances. When you choose to rejoice, when the situation says you must be gloomy and you must throw a pity party on yourself. God shows himself faithful on your behalf. We serve a God who is sovereign whether things are working or not we say that God is sovereign even if things look like they are not working out he's still sovereign the disciples were aware of that that there was a crown ahead of them if they were identified with the suffering of Christ they were also identified with the rewards ahead uh, as we are going through what we are going through as a people may we not forget to work for God because there's a crown ahead of us the Bible talks of the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him in James chapter 1 verse 12. The Bible says, talks about the righteous man's rewards that is going to be given to people who give even a cold water to the one of the little ones. The Bible talks about the crown of rejoicing that is going to be given to people who are given to evangelism and church planning and shepherding the flocks of God. May we never forget that our full joy comes when we serve the Lord because they are going to be crowns. I think of the time that that we are going to meet our Savior and there are going to be crowns. I just think of it as a prize giving day. You know, in a prize giving day, and all the children are there, and some are getting the prizes, and some are not. Those who are not getting the prizes, the way they feel bad, I believe that's, that's what is going to happen to us when we meet our Lord Jesus Christ. If you didn't save him with all your heart, with all your might, and all your strength, you shall just be like that child who is looking and saying, I wish I had saved God better because there are crowns ahead of us. There are 
are crowns of glory. They are crowns of rejoicing. They are crowns of life. They are trees of life that the Bible says is going to be given to a man that hold on fast to what they have received. They responded by continuing. Our beloved, there's power in continuing in time of pressure. Scripture says day after day, from house to house, they continued to preach the word of God. They continued to, to speak that Jesus Christ is Lord. What kind of disciples? What, what gave them that power? What gave them that strength to continue, given such a circumstance? I believe there were a men and women of continuity. The Bible talks of uh, in Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 40, that the thematic scripture in the book of Acts. And in this passage, the scripture says, they continued daily apostles' teaching, doctrine, word of God, prayer. As a ministry, we believe in building the body of Christ through building individuals in Christ. And the word of God is pivotal. We are saying, continue. Reading the word of God. Have a Bible plan that you follow. Have a Bible plan that you follow. Because when you continue, it empowers you. They continued reading the word. They continued sharing the word. And there was great joy in that city. Because joy comes at the preaching of Jesus. The Bible says when, when Philip went to Samaria, there was great joy in that city. When we continue preaching the, the word of God, there shall be joy in, in, in our cities. When we continue to preach the word of God, there shall be joy in Mutare. When we continue to preaching the word of God, there shall be joy in Gaberon. When we continue to preaching the word of God, there shall be joy in Vindo. Even though the figs are not blossoming, but the preaching of God's word brings joy. The preaching of God's word brings peace. The preaching of God's word brings deliverance, even in, amongst a people that are depressed by the situation that we are going through. They continued. There's power in continuing. The Bible talks of Daniel. He was told that he should not pray again. But the Bible says, as usual, he went and prayed facing Jerusalem, as he had done before. We are in need of girls and boys that are going to pray on Zoom. We are in need of men and women that are going to mobilize prayer among the nations of the world because what we are facing, it needs a people that are going to call upon the name of the Lord because the Bible says, if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, I'll hear them from above and come and heal their land. The disciples continued praying. The Bible says Jesus Christ would go every day and pray as was usual to his usual time of prayer. Do you have a place of prayer? Do you have a time of prayer? You need a place of prayer. You need a time of prayer. You need to continue amidst of any kind of adversity and your joy shall be full. Ruth continued saving Naomi. He was a woman that did not have hope. But because she had made a commitment that I'm going to save this woman, she saw that there was something in the God of Naomi. She saw that there was something in the God of Naomi. And when Naomi says, my daughter, go back. I can't give birth anymore to a son that you can marry. Go back. But, but Ruth says, where you go, I will go. Your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. And she continued serving in the midst of adversity. And she continued doing what she knew that God had called her to do it and today she remains a source of inspiration to many. She remains a source of inspiration when we read a book because she even became the grandmother of Jesus. Continue serving. Continue doing what the Lord says you should do. Continue giving. I think of the story of the woman of Zarephath. Sometimes God wants us to give even when it's the last thing that we have because when he wants to bless you, the Bible says God comes to Elijah and says, Elijah, I've commanded the widow to come and be a blessing to you. My question is, did, were there no businessmen in Zarephath? But God chose this woman to go and be a blessing to Elijah. Part of me feels for this woman because she was in the verge of going to collect sticks and, and cook a last meal. You almost feel like, why did God do this? But let me tell you, the Bible says God has chosen the foolish things of this world in order to shame the wise. When God is in the business of setting you up for a blessing, he brings an opportunity for you to give. I don't know what about you, but there are many instances in our life when we have seen the breakthroughs of our lives by giving, by giving of ourselves to the cause of the ministry, by giving of our resources to the cause of the ministry, and the Lord opened doors that we cannot even continue to talk about. There's power in continuing. 
There is power in doing things for God. I said we lost a car at the verge of, when we were at the verge of starting a ministry. But today, by the grace of God, God has opened so many doors for us. We see, we live to see the graces of the Lord. Just last year, at the peak of the, of the virus and everything, I received a call that I've got a job to work at every home for Christ to the glory of God. The Bible said, God is not unjust to forget your labor in that you have ministered unto the saints and do minister. Whenever you give to God, you are not giving unto a man. It's an investment. And when you go and when God blesses your life, he doesn't bless it in a normal way. He does it the Ephesians 3.20 way. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above that which we think or imagine according to the power that is at work within us. Continue giving, continue saving, continue living a righteous life like Joseph. Even though he was under pressure, but he says, how can I do this and sin against my God? Praise the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to just come to the end of our presentation. As I wrap up, I want you to see the words of Habakkuk. He says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to treat on the heights. That's Habakkuk 3, 18 to 19. Why would he rejoice in such a scenario? He says, the because of the sovereign God who is my strength. Habakkuk cites the source of his strength. I believe he was talking about the Holy Spirit. There can never be any meaningful joy without the involvement of the Holy Spirit. I think of the story of our Lord Jesus Christ right at the inception of his ministry. The Bible says when he comes on the scene in Luke chapter 4, he says to the people of his time, I am coming today, but I'm coming to you because the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He was telling them that all that you are going to see from now henceforth, it's not thing about me. It's about the empowering of the spirit of the Lord. Beloved, there is no limit to what God can do with a man and a woman that is yielded to the spirit of God. He says from now henceforth the blood are going to see. From now henceforth the broken hearted hearts are going to be healed. From now henceforth you are going to see the preaching of the Lord's favor. That is even our theme as a ministry from last year till now. Joy comes when you allow the spirit of God to have total control of your life. Joy comes when the Spirit of God is the one that leads and directs your paths. Joy comes, as Habakkuk says, he makes my feet. You can't make your own feet to be like the feet of a deer. It has to be God who make your feet to be like the feet of a deer. He says he enables me. You can't enable yourself. The Holy Spirit, the spirit of enablement. That is why the Bible tells us that the disciples were able to reach the whole of the world because of the gospel. The Bible says, oh, the whole of Asia Minor was preached. The gospel was preached because the spirit of God was upon the servant of God. Paul. And I want us to let us know that as a ministry, we believe in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Without his involvement, our efforts are fruitless. He's the one who enables us to tread on the heights. Alone you fall short, but with him you can run against a troop. That's why David will say, with the Lord I can run against a troop. With the Lord I can leap over wall. He talks of a deer's feet. They've got a soft inside, but their outward exterior, it's quite hard so that they can run against any terrain. They are able to run against any terrain, any surface that they are given. They can do it. I want us to know that Habakkuk was pointing to the people that they should remember that they are covenant children. And covenant children, they are not affected by what is happening. I believe when he was talking about it, he was thinking of Deuteronomy 28, that they are carrying a blessing. Jesus, God comes to them in, in Deuteronomy 28 and talks to them and says that because if you only follow me and do what I say to you, I'm going to do something unique. I'll set you high above the nations of the world and you are going to be blessing the city and you are going to be blessing the town. This is a time when we are encouraging the church that though we are walking in a place when fig trees are not blossoming, when there are no cattle in the stores, when there are no sheep in the pen, yet because of the blessing that you carry, you are still blessed. You are still favored. 
The Lord can make a way where there seems to be no way. That's his nature. Because his name is El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one. His name is El Elyon, the strong and strong one. His name is El Roy, the Lord who sees. His name is El Alim, the everlasting God. You serve a great God. That's why you can maintain joy in time of adversity. You serve a great God. That's why you can maintain even the peace of the Lord. Even Jesus says, my peace I give unto you. I do not give you as everybody else gives. The world gives peace when there is no war. The world gives peace when everything looks normal. But as for me, I give peace even in the midst of abnormality. As for me, I give you peace in the midst of things looking like they're upside down. You carry a blessing. Ah, by the blessing you carry. COVID cannot overtake you in the name of Jesus Christ. That's why Psalm 91 says that no harm shall overtake you. Meaning to say, pay adventure. Harm comes in your home accidentally. But do not be afraid because no harm is able to overtake you. I know it's because in, during Christmas we had COVID, the whole house, we had COVID, but we saw the Lord healing us. When I was having COVID, I thought I'm done. I thought things were never going to be the same. I thought I was going to die. But I remember calling for prayer from saints. I remember getting encouragement even from my senior pastors and saying the Lord is still in control. And I used to talk to Pastor Nyasha and I say, will I ever be able to preach? Because I was affected even psychologically. But I remember her saying that it cannot overtake you. And beloved, we are here as a testimony that the Lord's word says, even though harm comes, but it cannot overtake you. May we be encouraged to know that we still maintain our joy because the harm that is around us cannot overtake us. May we be encouraged to see that when, it, when, we, when we go through the valley of the shadow of death, it will, not, it will not bring harm to us. Hallelujah. We are here to, not, to let you know that the blessing, by the blessing you carry, no evil shall come and overtake you. By the blessing you carry, you will rejoice again. By the blessing you carry, things are going to come as what God says. It does not change the plans that God has for us. As a ministry, we believe we are going somewhere. As a ministry, we believe we are going to the nations of the world. All the nations that God has said we are going to affect, we shall affect them. Though the fig tree is not budding, though there are no sheep in the pen, though there are no cattle in the stores, but by the blessing we carry, the favor that is upon us, we are going to affect the world for Jesus Christ. And we are going to sing a new song, a song of praise unto our God, a song of victory, a song of conquering, and know that greater is he that is in us than the one that is in the world. May you be encouraged today that joy is a fruit of the Spirit. May you be encouraged today that the relationship that you have with Jesus Christ brings you joy. May you be encouraged today to count your blessings and not your losses. May you be encouraged today to involve the Holy Spirit in the affairs of your life. May the Lord bless you. Let us take time to pray. Father, we thank you. We worship you for your word is life-giving. We worship you for your word is life-transforming. We pray that the entrance of your word may it bring light in families, may it bring light in nations. We pray that, Father God Almighty, we see transformation happening because of your word. We pray that you may bring joy, Father, to that heavy heart in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, Father God Almighty, that you may bring peace, O oh God, to that heart that was not having peace. We want to thank you. We want to worship you. We give you back the glory because it's you who is at work with us in us both to will and to do for your good pleasure we give you the honor and the praise in the mighty name of jesus christ we pray amen